Howdy, everyone. Welcome to another Wednesday Lunch Live Sketch. My name is Frank Summers, and today we're going to be... That's just the phone. Sorry about that. Today we're going to be doing uh, Zero Suit Samus. And I wanted to take a bit of a different direction with her. Um, I kind of want to do something a little... Oops. I wanted to go something a little gritty. Uh, something maybe a little less what we're used to seeing with her, where she's more cartoony. Um, figures all of a sudden now I'm getting calls and SMS just like crazy. Um, so I wanted to do something that was based more on uh, the alien, uh, Ripley from Aliens. Uh, I really like Sigourney Weaver's face. I really like, she has, um, I mean, she's, a, she's an attractive woman, but in the uh, alien movies, they really, they rough her up a little bit. And she has a certain um, quality about her. Um, that doesn't look like she doesn't look like she can take she doesn't take any crap, but uh, at the same time I like that she has, like in particular I like this this particular one where she still kind of looks scared and fearful, you know, and that's kind of what I wanted to inject into the into my version of a zero suit Samus because I feel like she's a bounty hunter and you know she's most of the time she's inside of this power suit that gives her strength. Um, and when she doesn't have it anymore, she's kind of more or less obviously naked, thus the zero suit. And so one of the things I thought about too was, you know, was she going to be built? Would she be like a bodybuilder? Would she have, would she be have a lot of strength? But I figured she'd probably be a little bit more like a ballet dancer, um, where she's live but still strong, still muscular, um, still feminine, and have a certain gracefulness about her because she needs to be able to jump through all these hoops, so to speak, as she fights Metroids. So why don't we get started here? I already took the liberty of uh, going through a bunch of thumbnails, and I pulled out this one. I like the trepidation of it. I like that she might be seeing something off in the distance, maybe someplace up in a nook or a cranny in some sort of cave or something like that. And... Um, so she's a little, she has a little bit of fear. Let me, let me pull it back a little bit. There. So we'll just start doing what we normally do, which is to work over our shapes and define her form and her anatomy. Um, she's less cartoony. I'm looking for a less cartoony version. Um, so what we're doing is we're just going to mass in our planes and try to make sure that she is solidly drawn. Um, and again, I, I like that she had a little bit of a lean going on in her pose. And her sh shoulders are thrown back. She doesn't quite know what to expect. There's something up here. But right now, we're just going to mass in her shapes and define her skull. And I'm at, uh, for some reason I'm attracted to the top of her head having this shape like that. And so I want to go with that a little more. And I want to make sure that I am finding the proper planes. Um, I like Sigourney Weaver's jawline. A yeah, very strong jawline. I guess in retrospect, I mean, she really is perfect for that part. She has large eyes, too. Very large. Uh, like doe eyes. Um, which help us kind of relate to her a little bit. Okay, and at this stage, I'm working relatively quickly. I'm just trying to find what works. And I think she's going to have, I want my Samus to have thicker, shorter hair that she'll pull up into a ponytail, but it won't go past her shoulders. And I want to have her shoulders be broad, like there's some padding in there, so... 
And again, I want them rolled back. She has some musculature here. We have the costal arch of the root cage going down into the pelvis, tucking into, oh, I suppose, the crotch area. And I wanted her to be taking a step forward, a very tentative step forward. Going to our kneecap. So I also came up with a different type of shoe. Something a little more streamlined. Um, I probably could pull it a little more in to what uh, I don't like this high heel. I'm going to ditch that. I just don't like it. But I will give her thicker shoes that are reminiscent of her suit. Get some calf in there. You know, I hope I invite you to listen to me and uh, grab your sketchbooks, grab your pencils, and just put me on in the background and and just draw on your own. You don't have to draw what I'm drawing, um, but just use this time to work on your own craft to. Just to work it really is important that you just keep working and find uh, a good sorry I got lost there find a good time to do it every day and keep keep going with it because I'm thinking about this hand this backhand here um, I kind of want it to be open almost like she's expecting something and she's you know maybe almost getting ready to go into a fist. But this hand moving forward with her step. Let's break it down. A little more trepidatious. And I'm not quite sure I like the angle of this hand. Um, I mean, she could be swinging it out more to her side, which is feminine. Keep that for now. I mean, I'm, I will definitely go back to it and revisit. But I want to keep working my design. Um, if you look at any speed drawing or any speed painting, you see that they work an area over and over and over again, and, it's and they erase it, and they do it again, and they go back to it, and they erase it. It's because they're just never sure. They're never sure. Well, it's not that they're not sure. They're trying different things and then they step back and then they work someplace else they work a knee or they work the rib cage or a hand and then when they go back to that area they see oh that's that's not what i that's not what i wanted it to be and right now what i'm going to do is exactly that i'm going to zoom out i'm going to do my let's hide the reference it's getting on my nerves i'm going to zoom out really far and and by doing this it's erasing all of the detail and all i am left with Especially if I squint at it, all I am left with is the silhouette. And that helps me see the pose. It helps me see what's working. It helps me see what's not working. I can tell already that this arm here is maybe slightly too thick. So I can pull it back a little bit. Not a big deal. I'm going to get some traps in there. And let's, let's zoom back out again. And I want to look at her neck. And I feel that her neck is pro – zoom out, zoom out. Her neck and her head are projected a little too, for, uh, too, little too forward, which is easily remedied. Selecting it and just pulling it back. Just pulling it back. Just a hair. And if I zoom out again, do my trick of zooming out, and it feels a little better. It feels a little better. I'm looking at the proportions. 
I can tell already that. So my rib cage, I, I wrote, wrote in here. There we go. When I was in college, I had a pretty good anatomy teacher. And um, he worked on cadavers. So I believe he taught um, medical students dissection. And he knew all the names, of, all the muscle groups. And I unfortunately forget a lot of that. And now I want to de-emphasize, I know this is not popular, but I want to de-emphasize her breasts. I, I don't, of course she has to have them and she'll, she's a woman. I don't want to give her giant massive breasts. My Samus will not have massive breasts. Okay. I feel like I'm, feel, I'm feeling pretty good about this. I want to zoom in a little bit more and we can start working her head and her face. So we can make another layer and we can pull down our other one, pull the opacity down just to break it down a little bit. And we can get into here and really start defining some of this stuff. So I want her hair to be kind of tousled and thick. Um, you know, because she's like in a suit all day long. She's she's not going to have the best hair. High cheekbones. I really like Sigourney Weaver's cheekbones and her jaw and her chin. Very prominent, very strong features. And her head is rotated up. So we will see some of the canopy. The canopy of the jaw that exists under here. We'll get a hint of under her nose. Let's put the ball of the nose in. Here's the plane of the nose. Here's the nostril. And then build the nostrils out. There we go. And one of the things that I know Samus, from the Japanese version, she has these hair, the hair on the side. Um, so I'm going to run with that idea, but make it a little thicker, kind of like our Sigourney Weaver model from Aliens. Tufts, like tufts of hair. It's pulled back into this tight bun on the back of her head. And let's get the, the hint of the other tuft on the other side. And the hair we can treat with thick pieces and thin pieces. Now we can work her mouth. Her, the Sigourney Weaver model has very thin lips. And uh, what I like is that you can see generally the bottom of her teeth, her bottom teeth sticking out. So I kind of want to work that in a little bit. Let's get these eyes to settle into the skull. You know. Her pupils looking up. And give her some thickness on top to denote some lashes, eyelashes, and thinner brows, a little bit thinner eyebrows. A hint of an ear, strong jawline. And we can just come down here into the shoulders. And again, I wanted her shoulders to have a little bit of padding in them as if there's something in there. 
moving into the deltoids. The armpit tucks into and then comes out of, in this case, her breasts, but for the males, it would be the pecs. I should say that women have pecs as well, but they just have breasts sitting on top of them. They obviously have pecs, otherwise they wouldn't be able to move their arm. And she kind of has, will keep things streamlined. Some muscle. High in the back, low in the front, the muscles ride. They ride like that. And now here's where I get a little confused what this bracelet is. Let's look at the reference. Uh, you know, it's... It's a little more rounded than what I have here. So we can go we can go a little more rounded. We can do that. You know, corners are a little more curved. And she has that detailing. Which maybe in color I will I will address clearer. And again the hand, you can just break the hand into pieces, into shapes that are more easily digestible. So we have the palm, the back of the hand, and our first knuckle right here with the index finger. And then the middle finger, and the fingers roll away and tuck under each other. And we'll treat the middle and ring finger as a grouping. And our pinky can kind of come out a little bit. to add some variety and interest. I don't want this space to be the same as that space. That works pretty well. I want more space because it, it, it just adds interest and variety. And again, I wanted the hand to be slightly open as if she's getting ready to make a fist or she kind of defend herself in some fashion. So the hand is, is tense. There's a bit of tenseness to the hand. Almost like a gunslinger or something, like she's getting ready to She's getting ready to leap. Check my time here. So I don't, I don't ever want these to go longer than maybe 20 minutes. So why don't we go in here and just start pulling our shapes in a little better. Uh, there we go. Same thing over here. This is a little more rounded, her cuff. I would like to spend some time here on this hand. Here's our thumb. And the hand can rotate away from us. Maybe a little more to the side away from us. And again, similar treatment with the middle and, and ring fingers close together. And maybe we don't even see the pinky. We'll experiment with that. I'll give that, I'll let that sit in my head for a little bit and see how I feel about that. We'll experiment with no pinky. Maybe we just don't see it. It's just not in our field of view. And let's just come down to the butt. Tapering down. Some muscular legs. Tapering down. Into the knee. The calf comes out from behind. Into the shin bone. And again, here's, here's an element that I'll borrow from, from her Smash Brothers model. I want to kind of keep this. Looks like they're wedge, wedge shoes. But they're similar to uh, her Varia suit. These boots. All right. And this leg recedes into the distance. It's behind. It's going back. Okay, good. Now some of the detailing on her. She has some stripes here. And now let me see. So she has a stripe that comes on here and here. And down over her breasts. 
and down into the sides, wrapping up into her rib cage. This one I can probably just follow the contour and it can just disappear someplace behind her rib cage. Following our contour. These are very graphic lines that are showing us the contours of her body. Uh, I'm I'm going to admit the ones that run down the middle of her chest. They just don't make any sense to me. I feel like they're extraneous. I don't like them. That's my that's my prerogative. If I don't want to use them, I don't have to. And then she does have something along her legs. It looks like her Smash Brothers suit is a little different, and maybe her knee. The details. So this is getting troublesome right here. I can probably pull out some of the anatomy here. It's probably a bit much. I'm going to wrap this up very soon. I don't ever want these to go more than maybe 20, 25 minutes. Um, yeah, I'm just going back and forth with this. So it looks like the knee is defined, and then it's just kind of it just kind of wraps around, and then it kind of just it's uh, you know wraps around to this design and just disappears behind the calf someplace. And I guess the same would be handled back here. Okay. There we go. And she doesn't really have much of anything going on in her um, in her arms. Her arms are pretty bare. She has some in her wrists and in her hands. We can remove some of this construction. Maybe her hand, this hand is slightly big. And then she knows she has this detailing here on the back of her hand. And she has some stripes going on here. Uh, I may take these fingers and move them. Um, I guess I could put them here. Above, pinky. I don't know. Yeah, I go. Back, I'm going back and forth with it in my head. I'm working very rough and loosely right now because I'm simply trying things and I'm seeing with sticks. Why don't we put it back the way it was without the pinky? It's something I'll have to revisit. Let's pull this down a little more. So I can see that the breasts are not properly lining up, so it will need to be adjusted. And this detailing doesn't help either, the, the line detail. It's certainly something that would need to be thrown on after the fact, after you're kind of happy with how everything is sitting, uh, anatomically that is. Uh, but that said, there's my Zero Suit Samus. Uh, I think I'm going to have like a scar or maybe something to her, like her cheek, you know. You know, she's got some battle damage, or maybe even pull this hair down a little bit. It's a little, this has gotten the hair down a little too cartoony. Um, so we can just pull it down something more like this. Got a little, little away from me there. Maybe even introduce some more on this side, too. Like some along the temple that we, you know. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll let that sit in my head, too. I'm not sure. I might want to keep the silhouette here broken so we can see the brow a little clearer. Okay, well, I think that wraps it up for Zero Suit Samus for this week. Uh, I'd like to go back to just last week's really quickly uh, and address as a critique, because it is always helpful to critique your own work, um, this guy here. And the only thing that really bothers me the most when I look back on him is did not detail his shoes nearly as much as I should have. I should have went in there and added some. So you can probably barely see this because I'm working so lightly. Uh, it's got a darker color. Some laces, some detailing of the shoe, um, something minimal, but at least to give us the, the idea that there's something going on with the shoe. And maybe I treated his hat a little too much. I could have pulled it in just a little bit on that side over there, a little tighter to his head. Other than that, this one came out okay. 
Well, there you have it. I thank you very much for joining me this week. Uh, hopefully you'll stop by again next week. You can uh, subscribe to me on YouTube or find me on Google Plus under Frank Summers, and you can circle me there, or I'm on Twitter at Ganklin, G-A-N-K-L-I-N. You can follow me there for any updates or any other shenanigans I may be up to. That'll about do it for this week, and I hope to see you next week. Have a good one.